What's up, guys? Um, I'm going to be doing a, well, I want to say quick tip on how to create mist or fog on water, like a lake or ocean or whatever. Um, however, it's kind of a beginner tutorial because um, I'm trying to teach a friend here how to do this, and, and he's kind of new at, at After Effects, so I might over-explain some things a little bit for you folks who... Um, have a little bit of experience and then uh, if not if you're new to After Effects then maybe you'll appreciate the in-depth explanation of how things work so to get started I have a clip here which I downloaded from one of the stock video websites um, they let me download this one for free in exchange for my email address so that they can continually hound me to sign up for their paid service um, but the good news is I did get this one for free, so I'm, I'm just going to take this clip and I'm going to drop it in onto my new comp icon. And there it is. Uh, press RAM preview here so we can get a little look-see at this. Nothing too exciting. Um, and it's a very kind of small lake and it's in the middle of the day, so I'm going to probably make some adjustments to this here. Um, that's probably good enough. That's pretty much what the whole clip looks like. And uh, so, yeah, good times. We're going to um, first off, <clears throat> going to uh, put in a new solid by right clicking down here, going to new and solid. And it doesn't really matter what color it is, you can make it comp size and then hit OK. And then make sure you have your black solid or whatever color solid you have selected and go up here to effects and then noise where's noise and fractal noise um, now there's two things we want to do in uh, the fractal noise two things we want to animate one is going to be the evolution and the other is going to be this thing let's see under sub settings here we have the sub offset, which um, is basically the X and Y uh, coordinates. So, like if I turn this up uh, or down, it goes left to right. I turn this one up, it goes up or down. And that, that's going to really depend on the scene that you're trying to create. So, um, and then the evolution, of course, um, is what kind of gives the, the messes with the fractal. Um, I'm not even sure what, what how to describe what, what evolution is. It's the evolution of the fractal. So the way that the settings here work um, inside most of the effects in After Effects that you'll see with this 0x and then plus 0.0 um, .0 degrees, obviously the one on the right of the x is degrees. So if I turn this, um, you'll see it goes up to 359 and then goes back to zero and then this rotation goes to one so this is kind of like the hands on the clock if you, if you want to think of it that way um, every time this gets a 360 the uh, revolution will um, go up another number and of course vice versa if you go backwards so depending on how much movement you need um, you can either do degrees or um, you can just go right to the uh, the evolutions here and that that will obviously be a lot more now in order to animate anything I'm going to zero these out not that it matters if you don't have any keyframes in it um, but I'm going to just zero these out by um, clicking pressing zero the tab and the zero and so now we're zeroed out so I'm going to go back to the first keyframe in order to animate anything in After Effects you do need to have more than one keyframe um, it has to have a start and ending keyframe. So uh, the way you get keyframes, I'm going to actually open up my black solid and my effects, and my fractal noise layer. And you'll see right now that there are no keyframes anywhere in here. So the way you turn on keyframes is you, you click on the little stopwatch next to the setting that you want a keyframe on. So you'll notice if I click on this, get a keyframe right there at the timeline um, where the uh, the playhead was now if I if I click this again that 
keyframe is going to disappear and I won't have any keyframes. So you actually want to leave this on. So I'll click that again, back at frame one. Um, and then, so you'll have that, that beginning keyframe. Now that starts your animation. If I go all the way to the end, um, and that, again, that clock is still pressed in. So if I, let's say, turn the degrees up to, oh, I don't know, let's do around 150. You'll see that that creates another keyframe here at the end. Uh, so now you have your beginning and your end keyframe, and you can see now that when I drag the playhead with my mouse button, my left mouse, that we're having some uh, effect on the fractal noise. So a um, couple ways to change your keyframes, but the easiest one, as far as I know, is to just double click on it, and it'll bring up this little box. Um, and so you can uh, you can make your changes here. So let's just make this 180, and then uh, hit OK. Because what some people do when they're beginners is they're in here doing this number, trying to uh, change their number here. And what's happening is that's creating another keyframe. So you don't want to do that. So I'm just going to click on that, hit the delete button. And so right now we have um, this offset. Uh, excuse me, the evolution at uh, actually what do we have this it's evolution okay yeah from 0 to 180 and as I'm dragging the playhead you'll see this number going up from 0 all the way up to the other end at 180 so that's how that's how keyframes work so all this is doing is kind of mixing this around right now um, what we want to do is actually move this and in this particular case it could be either left or right uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter, but um, I think I'm going to. Let's see. Move it. I'll move it towards my right, so that would be plus uh, on this this first number here. So again, this doesn't really matter where you start. Um, right now, it's at 159. So if I were to put in a keyframe here by clicking this, um, you'll see that that the actually got to open this up. That the keyframe did, in fact. Um, get created there at 159, but there's there's really no movement on that. So it, again, you have to have more than one keyframe in order to have an animation. So I'm going to go over to the end, and then I'm going to move this number from 159 up to I don't know. Let's do 295. I don't want it to move that much, and of course that will create that next keyframe there. So I will uh, click this first frame button to rewind and then the RAM preview button so we can kind of get a look at how our fractal noise is moving and we'll let that render the frames or cache the frames I should say and okay that's not too bad that might be moving a little bit fast for the scene but we can always change that later so I'm going to stop that right now close all this up and then the next thing we want to do is we need to change the blend mode. If you do not see your blend modes um, right here, you have to click this little metal icon. You can see these guys down here. You have a, a couple of different ones. It's kind of just to save screen space, really. But since I uh, have a 27-inch screen, I usually just keep them all, uh, all checked open. So we're going to want to change the blend mode here to something, one of these lightning blend modes. Um, if you didn't know this before, the blend modes are separated by these little separators um, and the these are all darkened blend modes here. These are lightened blend modes and these are neutral blend modes. Um, these are mm, various other types of operations um, but the, these are going to be the main ones here uh, that you'll be using. So we're going to use a, a lightened one. Let's try uh, um, well, let's try screen and screen actually doesn't look too bad we're gonna to have to make some adjustments obviously it's a quite thick and bright so let me just a little bit of a, of a RAM preview here and just see how fast we're moving okay I mean it, it doesn't look too bad uh, the, the next thing you're gonna to want to do is uh, make a mask because you don't want your mist all the way up here so we're gonna make sure that our black solid is selected and gonna select my pen tool 
and I'm just going to click right, oh, I'm going to go a little bit above the waterline. So I'm going to click right here and maybe in here. And if you click, hold down, and drag, you get this Bezier curve. Um, otherwise, you just get, oops, zoomed out there. You get uh, just jagged lines. So if I, I'll show you that here. If I just click, I'm getting just these straight lines. So you, if you want a little bit of a curve, you can drag that. And then I'm going to drag that off. And I'm going to come around the bottom and then close my curve. Uh, if you can see the little circle when I click on this last uh, curve point, the little circle appears. That means that you're about to close the curve. So I'm going to close it. Uh, then I'm going to go back to my selection tool and uh, for the moment turn off this guy right here that shows the mask edges. And you can see that it looks quite horrible at the moment. Um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's still too bright, and number two, uh, it's got a very, very hard edge here on the mask. So I'm going to open up my layer here. I can close my effects layer, open up my mask layer, and under my mask one, which should be the only one there since we only created one, I'm going to go to a mask uh, feather, and I'm going to drag this number up, and you'll see that gives us a much softer edge up here. Um, you can actually not even tell it's there. Now, I think one of the problems with this particular scene is, well, this it's too bright. Uh, the lake, it's in the middle of the day, a hot sun. I don't know if you, you generally see steam in that type of, uh, or mist in that type of condition. Uh, I'm not a weather guy, but I'm just guessing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that part a little bit darker. I select my Tranquil Lake uh, layer and go to Effect, Color Correction, and Curves. And add a Curves effect. And I'm going to go ahead and drag. Um, just click and drag right here in the middle. Um, just drag down. Make that quite a bit darker. So it looks more like a late afternoon kind of sun thing. Um, so that, that helps with the contrast a little bit. And, and our steam, or our steam, I keep wanting to call it steam, mist still looks a little bit like smoke, but we can uh, adjust that by going um, back into the effects of our layer here and turning down, well, we could turn down the brightness of the fractal noise, and that looks a little bit less like smoke. Um, another thing we could do is, um, instead of doing that, let me turn that back up to zero, is in the layer itself under transform and opacity, we can turn that down quite a bit and then give that a RAM preview and see how that looks. It's not looking too bad. It looks like it might be moving a little bit fast, but again, those those are adjustments that you can make uh, in your keyframes. So let's see how that looks. Okay, and another it doesn't look too bad. Now another thing you can do um, in the fractal noise layer is if you want, you can add a you can add a curves um, also, but Another thing I like to do is under color correction, add a levels just because it's a little easier to deal with. Um, and you can grab this slider right here and you can make pull this in and it will cut off some of the black, crush some of the black and the fractal noise. So that thickens things up a little bit there as you can see in the, in the layer or if you want you could uh, put that back and pull the white one and that will that will um, thin th things out a little bit in the fractal noise so it doesn't look as thick and um, then you could also of course go up to this one and play with the gamma and that will turn it up or down um, and play with the contrast as well by pulling these in and out and then just kind of have a play with those and see what looks best for your scene so yeah, I mean, I think that looks okay. Uh, if you wanted to, if that looked a little too much like smoke, um, you could just go in here and 
do something like a blur. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Where are my blurs? Blur. Do a fast blur. And maybe turn the blurriness up. Yeah, that doesn't look too that doesn't look too much like a blur, it looks like a blob. So let's turn that down a little bit. Do a RAM preview. And yeah, I mean it doesn't look too bad. So another RAM preview. Let's play. And maybe that's, get, uh, that's how you get missed on your lake or pretty much anywhere else you want.